All right, welcome back. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Ian. How are you two doing? Great. How are you, Al? I'm doing real well. I'm really excited because I got this note yesterday and said, can Ian join me? We have this new partnership between Medallia and Vizier. And I'm like, absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. I'm excited to learn about it. And uh, I know this time of remote work and trying to keep people engaged is tough. So, you know, want to hear what you all have to share about it. And uh, so I'll let you have it and I'll join you later in uh, the discussion, maybe in 30 minutes or so. That sound good? Perfect. All right. Enjoy. Hi, Ian. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you are welcome, Melissa. This is this is a great experience. Uh, I think the fifth different web meeting technology I've had to learn at short notice. So, you know, welcome to the work from home era. It's uh, it's going to be fun. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, a lot of last minute stress figuring out new software. Um, I feel like you're new, my new best friend since we're working together um, on this partnership. So I thought maybe Ian, we'd start with introductions uh, about ourselves and about our companies before we jump into the conversation. Would you mind going first, please? I'd be happy to. It, 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 your, the questions you sent out ahead caused me a whole bunch of reflection, and I was going back to the fact that, you know, I, I started my career when we were still doing customer set, sorry, employee satisfaction surveys. You know, while does that may seem, you know, when I first started working, employee satisfaction was a thing that a few organizations were doing, and then. Uh, Early on in the 2000s, uh, some folk may know, some folk may not, but I spent a lot of time in a consulting role, uh, advising on HR strategy, HR programs. And as part of that, ran a, an engagement program for one of our clients. We, we built a whole HR architecture around their value set, like cut, you know, employee pro value proposition linked up to customer value proposition. And so we, we built a tailored employee engagement survey as part of that. And, what was fascinating with that survey is like we did it all by hand. Like we used SurveyMonkey, we spat it all out into Excel. I had a, a, a small army of analysts who would pour over it and make charts and we'd sit and look at them. They'd go and remake charts and we'd sit and look at those some more. We'd put the program together and then we, we were, I believe we were good. We we're kind of leading practice because we would take it out to every property manager and like, what does this mean? What are you going to do? They would come away with identified actions and they'd put it in place. But the, the reality of that experience was you know, that took us four months. So, you know, a survey once every 18 months, they, they almost had no time to make changes before the next survey rolled around. And that was kind of that world of um, engagement surveys and, and, and how do we use those to really help people move forward? And then from those experiences in my career, I got pulled, compelled, I think is a better language into the whole uh, people analytics space. You know, the sentiment about people is one piece, their situation in terms of the work they do and the jobs they do is another, the, the linking up to the production and, and how they make how that makes things work is another. And so then for the last 15 years or so, I've been building products to help HR be more data-driven. Benchmarking to start with, busier more laterally. I've just pursued this fascination with like, how do we use people data to make organizations smarter and better? And the, the connection with Medallia has just like re enlivened a lot of my history and then you know just made it really exciting to think about how far we've come and what the potential is for the future. And I think it's a really timely conversation as well because lots of people are wrestling with this experience thing. Is it engagement reinvented? Is it not? And I think we're going to help answer some of that question today. So looking forward to, to chatting with you some more. Let's hear about your background. Oh, thank you, Ian. Yeah, when we first met, I didn't realize that you had some background in engagement surveys. I feel like at this point, everyone's had some background in engagement surveys if you're in people analytics. Um, so it was actually over 15 years ago that I was working on an engagement survey, uh, Liberty Mutual Insurance, and we ran it annually and I ran it for nine years. So I had plenty of time to learn from my mistakes and make changes and um, you know, at the time we thought we were doing a lot of really advanced things um, that we were testing out in the engagement survey, but, you know, we struggled with getting people to action. Some managers took action and some managers didn't. Um, you know, we were more successful at the enterprise level. We we're able to raise issues to the CEO. Um, and then I moved to Citizens Bank and there I didn't have the engagement survey. So at first I was lost. How can I not have the engagement survey? How can that be in another department? Um, but then I found something new that was even more helpful. I met a new leader uh, who was running the consumer business and he wanted more frequent feedback. He wanted to improve the retention 
um, of the bankers. And so we, we implemented an always on so that he could speak essentially directly to the frontline employees and they could speak to him. And we did that through the always on. And that really changed my perspective. Um, and we moved you know, away from a focus on engagement to a focus on what's happening today to our bankers and what do they need to better enable them. Uh, and that was really eye-opening and is a lot about what I'm working on at Medallia today. Um, so really excited to talk about that. Sounds like you were certainly ahead of the curve or early on that always on because we, we, we still I still have conversations with people today. It's like, Ian, like, should we go to always on? Is that the right <laughs> approach? It's, and again, I think it's quite quite interesting to see how the through our experiences, the, the the practice has evolved and that the range of what people are doing and what feels right, what's comfortable is there's quite a few different stages as well. So yeah, I, always, always on, you know, it's only just started to become something that I think people are, are looking at. Right, in the EX space, um, at Citizens, I did move into CX for a couple of years. That was how I met Medallia. Um, and of course, we had many always ons running in so many of our businesses and our products direct to our customers. Um, so then I saw even more ways to expand the use of always on to be able to cut the data um, by having an always on running instead of running more surveys, uh, to be able to cut it by tenure or cut it by an event that employees had experienced. Um, so, you know, some real opportunities and so much opportunity to blend it with some of the data that comes from Vissier so we can have more complex cuts of the always on. Um, so I'd love to get into that, but I'm thinking we also haven't really talked a little bit about our companies just to make sure everyone watching knows about our companies. So if you wanna stay a few lines about Vissier, probably everyone knows about Vissier, but just to make sure. Uh, that's great, thanks um, Melissa. Vizier, the, the simple way to describe Vizier, it's it's a people analytics platform. We we take from raw data through to delivered insight, and we have the tooling to do all of that in between. We deliver it as a service. So our customers typically use us as the, the automation, the accelerator, the scaler of their people analytics practice. The things that they would be using, you know, four or five people to do in terms of data prep, that's done through Vizier. All of those people are used to do the interpretation. We also have really wide distribution capabilities, secure distribution. So again, when it comes to trying to push insights out to every line manager, that's really hard to do with a, a homegrown or home built technology set. So Vizier allows that kind of scale. So we, we've been in the space for 10 years. We've done a lot to really help create the practice that means people are making decisions off insight. Again, similar to Medallia, we don't see the answers having the chart. We see the answers having the chart being used uh, and have worked somewhat tirelessly over those years to to build technology that just makes that fast and easy, repeatable and secure um, for our, our customer set. So passionate about people analytics and have built a lot of that stuff over the years. And as you know, I am a huge fan of this year and first met you all 10 years ago when you were first founded. I think I was one of the first companies you spoke to and we instead ended up doing the uh, scotch tape and chewing gum method to put everything together. Uh, and yeah, would have been great to have Vissier. Um, and I'll just say a few words about Medallia because while everyone knows Vissier, I think Medallia might be new to some people and we're an action platform. So there are a lot of survey tools um, on the market and Medallia does do surveys and always on is probably one of the primary metrics by which or primary methods by which we do surveys. Um, but we're really about taking action and impacting business results just as, as this year is, which makes us such a great combination. Um, and the other piece that I think is really important about Medallia is we think of surveys as one signal to give us information about what employees and customers are experiencing. And that's one of the benefits of partnering with this year is there is such a rich set of signals in this year, um, especially incredibly complex signals that would be very hard to get straight from an HRAS that really need some um, important data manipulation to get to the place that we need in order to use it. Something like creating cohorts or personas, which would be hard for our customers to create on their own that they can get from this year. Um, so really Medallia runs um, surveys, we ingest all kinds of data about employees and customers and we use that information to inform managers to take action in the moment. So they get real time information, take real time action, um, and then employees and customers get the final say and provide feedback on the action that's been taken. 
uh, and, and we ingest um, data in many ways. And when we take it in from a survey, it can be video, voice, or typical text from a computer or a phone. So uh, we started to talk a little bit about um, how the two of us are coming together. And maybe we should start with a little bit about why we decided to create this partnership. I think that's I think that's a good place to start out. I, I was also thinking the whole you know for, for thinking about employee experiences and lots of lots of people are are hearing experience. The conversation in the market is about experience, experience, experience. I, I think there's there's something there in terms of what we were hearing from customers. What we saw as the opportunity around you know what does this experience thing mean? It, it's clearly not just engagement, but if it's not engagement, then what is it? So I think there's an element in there as well of, of what's um, brought the two organizations to, to deepen the way we work together that's, I think that's relevant in, in terms of truly focusing on why would you be building experiences? And, and maybe that's a good way to sort of give the example. So one of the things Melissa and I were, we talked about as our we look at our different technologies, if you see ex, ex, experiences being described, it's like there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different touch points. If you think about it as a consumer experience, you have an employee journey through your organization, but you could get really lost in trying to orchestrate capture at every single one of those places. Like, you know, do you ask them on day one? Do you ask them on day 90? Do you ask them when they got their benefits email? Like, when do you ask the question? Because there's thousands of questions to ask. So one of the reasons we come together is the recognition of to do experience well and to generate the right kinds of experiences one of the first things you have to identify is where am I going to get most value? Again, a lot of the, the conversation around experiences that the how do you capture it? I think what was really core as soon as we started talking is like, well, there's one thing to capture it, but then how do we use it to make a difference in the business? So I think, again, one of the first things we saw was uh, customers in common saying like, you know, this, this data is really interesting. Am I using it in the right place? And how do I know that? And then, People looking at Visio going, well, this is interesting, but how's it making people feel? You know, how does that generate? How is that affected in terms of the sentiment about that experience? So um, it became very natural for the two organizations to work together to work out how do we uh, make this work for businesses overall. I don't know if you would want how would you would add, you know that would support that as a perspective or add to that perspective. Well, I love the really simple example you've given a few times, Ian, so I'm going to borrow it from you. The idea that Visier can capture something like an employee had a manager change. So Visier knows that this event occurred. Um, and on the Medallia side, we know what employees are saying, um, their sentiment, how it's trending, how they're feeling, what kind of emotions are being reported. To bring the two together and understand that you know, an employee's sentiment and emotion is becoming more positive, more excited, more inspired. And that's connected with a manager change or it's going in the opposite direction and this employee is becoming at risk, right? So bringing the two together, I think you know what happened and we know how they feel about it. And to bring the two together, um, we're better together because now you know what happened and how they feel about it. Now you can do something about it. Well, so, so again, kind of adding to that question, I think, well, there's something about remote work um, and the notion of the connection with manager and the notion of you know how am I feeling about work that I think has elevated the need to to understand and and both sort of orchestrate and use experience data more carefully. Uh, you know, I don't know if, if what you've seen from from customer use or again kind of conversations you've been having around say people saying, well, how do I help my managers? Have a have a much better grasp of their people. Like I, when I manage people, and I could walk around the office, I could tell when somebody was having a bad day. You you knew you had. There's a whole set of sense that comes from just being around people. But when we're all working, mediated through video, uh, I'm very curious as to how that elevates the 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 need for that additional insights to really help people engage with people the right way. Well, that was exactly the situation we were having at Citizens a number of years ago, right? So this new leader and consumer, he wanted to understand more ongoing what bankers were facing, right, in the branches and how he could better support them. So by being able to have the always on and employees could just write in, they would write in about things that were really important to them that some people would often overlook. I tell the story about 
bankers writing in about snow plowing. So citizens, we tend to be in the Northeast and snow plowing is important to us. And we're about to enter that season. And they would write in and say, you have the plows come to our location at 9 a.m. in preparation for customers arriving, but employees arrive at 8 a.m. So we have to walk through the snow, right? So because you're plowing for the customers, you're not plowing for us, you don't value us, right? And initially, just hearing employees complain that they should plow sooner, that, that didn't resonate. People weren't understanding the importance of it. But when they got to express it in their own way, not just a, a ticket to facilities to plow sooner, but complaining that I don't feel valued because I walk in and I get wet every day and the customers come in on nice dry sidewalks. It's a simple example, but things like that, that employees take that to heart and say, that represents how you feel about me and our customers and our branch. And we're able to make simple changes like that, that weren't expensive, that were really meaningful to employees. But those kinds of things happen day to day. In an engagement yeah. survey, that's probably not what they're going to raise. Well, I, you, you generated two yeah. thoughts from East Melissa. One was, what a fantastic story. Like, there's no way that the engagement survey says, you know, should we plow earlier? Like, it just, it just doesn't cross your radar. Um, so I think that's a, a beautiful example for that. And the second is that that, that was a, let's just say that's an enlightened manager that, that you were dealing with as citizens. Uh, how is how is technology moving such that it, it supports the less enlightened manager, the, like the person who's necessarily, you know, people who care will always find a way. What I'm what I'm seeing in the technology is that, that we're able to get to the people who are not don't care, but are possibly in that neutral zone of like, you know, I'll do it if I'm prompted. Because um, you talk a lot about signals and action, and I'm, I'm curious about how the technologies evolved aligned to that signals and action. So I feel like some of the things that we did really helped some of those managers, because you can imagine the managers underneath him were on quite a spectrum. Some who were, you know, very excited about this and they were ready for it. And others who, you know, at the other extreme were reluctant, as you're mentioning. Um, but what happened as the feedback started coming in and we started taking action, you could see a difference across the regions and across the branches and where people were taking action and directly in, you know, customer experience. And then, of course, we saw the employees responses um, and we could see how those would trend. We could see what happened when the system went down and how we responded when the system went down. Right. Um, we could see when we rolled out um, the new home equity line of credit. Um, messaging that they found confusing and they immediately wrote in when we changed their incentive plan and they thought it wasn't as fair and they put together an employee team to solve for that um, and rolled out a new plan the following year. Um, the other managers got to see the impact of that, the increase in retention, the increase in um, positive employee emotion and the increase in customer experience. So we let the data speak. Uh, that's what yeah. I think is one of the powerful things about, you know, what we call democratizing the data that both Medallia and Visier believe in when they see it, yeah. you know, then you're not arguing about, is this going to be good or not? The data. Yeah. No, the, the data speaks. And I, again, think sort of coming back to the, the organization together, we've something seen something very similar, which is as we've, um, the first wave in most people analytics groups is, you know, let's get the people analytics team up and running. We'll serve senior leaders. We've had a, a, a lot of our customers push all the way out to line managers. And so now they're putting, um, the data to help decide who gets promoted, decide is a pay change fair, um, which who's moving where and how is moving helping my business unit grow or how's movement hurting my business unit grow. And, and instead of that being often what I'd call a corridor conversation where you know somebody says, oh, did you know so and such and such is happening? That becomes the de facto reality. And so everybody, in, in the, with a lack of other data, the anecdote becomes truth. And so HR spends all their time having to either respond to or you know find a way to push against it what, what we've seen is uh, a, a just really different capacity to manage the relationship with employees and so promotion decisions are more equitable and you can evidence that pay decisions are more equitable and you can evidence that again we've, we've seen slightly different processes where uh, there's been a need to reorient the, orient the business like i think I would like, hate to see the math, but my guess is something like 80% or 95% of all businesses have reoriented how they are working in the last eight months, you know, such as the disruption we've experienced. So we've seen organizations where finance would come in and say, hey, this need to go from business A to business B. HR analytics group has been able to come in and say, yes, but let's not get rid of people in 
business A and bring new people into business B, let's look at how we actually pivot. And so we don't have the whole mess of firing and hiring and, and what that weirdness that that looks like. We're far more open, transparent, supportive of the people in our business. It, it just It's a win-win all around. So that, that whole ability to get that insight to the manager really brings the, the management of the relationship of employees with the business far more real, far more sort of ongoing, as opposed to being this once a year engagement, you told us this, we're gonna do this, right, let's carry on and do business. <laughs> it's far more real time of, you know, this is happening, here's how we're responding, here's why it's fair. This is happening, here's how we're responding, here's how it's fair, what do you think? So we're constantly negotiating, and, and that's, I think, at, at the foundation of um, the whole move to experiences, because we have to make that work. Because um, yeah. it's, it's no longer a one size fits all kind of world we work in. Well, and I love how you talk about kind of the water cooler conversation or, you know, managers come up with these ideas. Um, and it's not because they want to make decisions just based on intuition or their observation. It's because they lack the data. So when we're able to share with them, not only here's what's happened in your group, but here's what's happened with an internal benchmark, or here's what happens on average. Then they can start to understand that there's a trend because when they have a group, right? Most managers only have five, seven, 10 people. Over the course of their whole career, they only see a handful of people turn over, get hired, get promoted. Um, they can't see the trends. So they don't know what's effective until they can see a broader view and understand really what is successful. So we used to spend a lot of time um, doing what we called one pagers. So we'd have a finding across say, you know, sales employees and be able to share that more broadly. So managers could understand this is what typically happens. When this happens to an employee, they tend to leave. When this happens to an employee, they tend to stay and be more engaged. And I think by both Visir and Medallia, providing data to the frontline manager, they can see this and have a better understanding I always remember we were having a turnover problem at a company I worked for and we started interviewing managers to understand, you know, what do you think is happening? And every manager we met said, we don't have a turnover problem. I've only had a couple people turn over this year. <laughs> well, each manager only had eight to 10 people, each manager having two turnover. When you put it all together, we had a significant turnover problem, but they couldn't see it because to them, it was only two people. Yeah. You, you you triggered something for me from a, a presentation I was at earlier this year. I attended Gartner Reimagine. I had a session in Gartner Reimagine and I did a bunch of listening as well. And there's a, an analyst there called Ron Hanscom. You're likely aware of him. And he was talking a lot about the experience world. And he, he highlighted uh, something that, you know, is coming up that there's just, there's, there's just an awful lot of different pieces out there and that you, you need somewhere. He called it the nexus of analytics. You know, and, this, and this whole notion that you needed somewhere to bring all of that brilliant insight together, again, to give to the manager so that it was used. And again, that's the piece that I, I kind of keep reinforcing. Like we can, we can, I've seen organizations, in fact, I was, a different organization I worked for, I didn't own the engagement process. I was in a different uh, change management role, but um, I calculated that we spent something like $600,000 getting the engagement number. Like we had a 120 question survey, we built all of this PDF work off it, we did all of this information to produce the result. I estimated we spent nothing doing anything with the data. <laughs> and in my mind, that was just completely wrong. You know, I, uh, I didn't spend very long in that business and you know, conversations like, why are we doing this? Or it didn't make me any friends. Um, so <laughs> it was clear that I needed to work somewhere where uh, talent would, would things would go differently. So, you know, it, it runs back to that whole conversation of you, you're going to do experience thinking about how do you show the business that it's making a difference? How do you show the business that, you know, doing this and doing this, listening to the onboarding, uh, doing surveys about the parking lot effectively in terms of the plowing, you know, or having a more open listening framework. It's like, what one thing could we do to make your life better today? That, that kind of, question mm -hmm. approach, just show that how that leads, really leads to um, effects on the organization, be it retention, be it um, you know, increased effort, all those different things. Uh, I, think, I think that's a, a really key piece of the Vizier Medallia together is we're able to start really connecting the, what have you heard? What has it happened? What does that mean for your organization? Um, again, encouraging people to think as they're looking about building experiences 
what's it going to do for your business in the end? How are you going to connect it to some kind of business outcome? Right. And I think that's what's key. And I love when you mentioned, um, you know, a, a survey about parking lots, right? Like we actually didn't have to create a survey about parking lots. Like you said, we just make it open so that employees can tell us what are the issues that are driving how they feel. Right. And that's, that's kind of the beauty in it because managers are trying to make decisions every day to inspire employees to improve productivity and sales and engagement um, and to just let employees say what it is. It's so much more direct than us trying to guess with like you gave 120 questions. But I do still see some value in in the engagement survey. I think certainly there are some things the company wants to understand to make some strategic decisions more likely at the enterprise level when we're trying to invest, you know, determine, are we going to invest, you know, a million dollars in something? Let's, let's do a, a study. Let, let's understand that. But when you have managers trying to make decisions every day, things are constantly changing. We're trying to figure out how do I run my branch, my store, my team. That's when we need this real time information straight from the employee. Just let them organically tell us. Um, and, and we talk about giving the information to the managers. At Medallia, many of our customers will provide information direct to employees, both customer feedback and employee feedback. So employees can see high level themes or high level scores of what's coming back in the always on or the engagement survey right in their own dashboard. It's very simple. It's just, you know, one page, a couple metrics. Um, but it also gives them the opportunity to see what actions are being taken. So here are the top three themes of what employees are saying lately. Here are the top three actions being taken locally. And then you can provide as an employee some feedback on those actions. This is great. This is making a difference for me. Or I have an idea about how to make this better. Or you know what? This isn't helping at all. It's that piece we were missing. We kept asking the same questions and saying, is it getting better? Is it getting better? And, you know, they, it's like the employees trying to read our mind. How do I tell them? It's this thing, <laughs> you know? So I keep scoring the development question low, but they're not guessing what my issue is about development. <laughs> that sounds like it really does close the loop, which is, it's been that, again, common challenge with engagement surveys. Like, I told you, you told me what I told you, but then I have no idea if you've done anything about it. Like, I, I think I've lost track of how many times I hear that. So it sounds like Medallia takes that a whole nother level. Like, we, we feed it back, and you can comment on whether you think the actions are working, not working, fast enough, urgent enough that nice closed loop piece. That's really cool. Exactly. And I think that's what we need. It, it provides more direct communication um, instead of us guessing on either side, which is not what we intended to do when we all first set out doing these engagement surveys. Um, but I think in the end, we tried using them for so many different things. So I would advocate for keeping the engagement survey for a strategic, you know, enterprise-wide decision-making and then use more frequent um, and of course, I advocate always on to really understand for the frontline manager, making quick decisions in real time about employees and customers, because whatever's happening to the employee, it's very hard to keep that from trickling through to impacting the customer. So that, that triggers a question in my mind, you know, from, from your experience deploying Medallia with customers, where do they tend to, where do they tend to do those pieces of listening? Like, you know, so they've got the engagement survey, that's the anchor, how do they tend to start then augmenting? Is it like orchestrate everything? Is it orchestrate at the start of the life cycle? You know, what are, what are some common ways people get started? I love that question. And that's probably the most common question we get. Um, and I often think about what we can do with Visier. Um, <laughs> can we look at what's happening with the Visier data to understand, you know, what is the business outcome we're trying to drive? Let's say that it's turnover. Now we can look at data coming through in Visier and see what kinds of events are happening that are most highly associated with turnover. That's an opportunity for a listening post. So we'll take an example. We talked before about a manager change. That might be a great example. Um, another might be something a little more complex that this year could easily do. Um, an internal employee who's applied for a job within their current company, and then they were rejected, right? Just taking data from HRIS and the ATS together um, and being able to reach out to the employee at that time or cut the always on by employees who've been through that experience. You know, this is a great opportunity to either just cut the always on or maybe you need a specific listening post to understand what's happening. That's, uh, but that's how I would advocate figuring out where to start. That, that sounds like, again, maybe worth double clicking um, just to, because it's a great way to think about it. We, we quite often get 
the the drive to put people analytics in place is like, well, we think we have an example. Would we think we have a turnover problem? We're not quite sure where, and so then the data starts to flow in. You identify that it, you know, twenty percent of your new hires, like within the first year, twenty percent of people are leaving. So that then generates, okay, if we can reduce that even by ten percent, we've got a huge cost saving. Good uh, people may know this, but I'll just highlight it. If you lose somebody within the first year, you've spent all the money to hire them, you've spent all the money to onboard them, you've probably not got the contribution back to the business from their work. So it's, a, it's an expensive place to lose people. So then you get to start orchestrating listening. Is it is it something about the onboarding process? You know, Is it first touch with manager? Again, I was thinking about, I was talking to one of our new employees yesterday and I was explicitly checking in saying like, what's it like joining Vizier when you know you open up a computer at home and start interacting us through video and screen, she was she was great. So people have been super active, but that's an important question to ask, and that's the kind of what is that experience? How do you know that experience is working? That's the kind of payback where you can see we've had high turnover in that first year window, first ninety days, depending on on your business. We are shrinking it, and we're shrinking it because we listened to what people needed. We found out the kinks in the process. We did exactly the right things for for just the right people to, to improve that process. And again, I think that's a great example of how the people analytics sort of foundation in the, the what's the situation for the people should and could drive the where do we need to listen? What do we learn? Does that then change the outcome? That, that's like that whole business. We've talked about it a lot as one plus one equals three. We're using data to work out what data we need to work out what we need to change to work out how to improve the business. So that's a, yeah, I think that's a great example. Yeah, and I love how you describe it as a double click, right? It's so common that people do an onboarding survey and they pick these points at 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But often those time periods aren't relevant to the employee, right? That's the company view that that might be when we communicate or how we run our program or where we check in. But for the employee, like you said, it's the first one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager um, it's the first time you come out of training and you're on the floor, right? And you're actually interacting with customers and you're saying to yourself, this is awesome. I really think I can do this. Or you're saying, oh my gosh, get me out of here. This is not what I want to do, right? These are the points, not necessarily 30, 60 or 90 days. It's the moment when you realize what this job really is. And you're either psyched or you are scared or, or somewhere in between. But this is where you're starting to reflect and decide, am I going to stay or yeah. leave? Am I going to produce or not? Is this for me? It's really about, you know, your expectations and what you're experiencing. And we can use this year data to help us understand where are those points and then put in um, a listening post where we're reaching out and expressing concern at this really pivotal moment for the employee and they can tell us how it's going for them. And now we have an opportunity to proactively intervene and prevent turnover for those we want to keep. And those we don't want to keep, we can let it continue um, and yeah. they'll naturally select out. I'm, I'm laughing because I, I, a while back, can sort of pre your work with a CHRO who had a significant number of people leave after one day. Like literally they came in on day one and they did not come back for day two. And she was like, what's going on? What's going on? That, you know, clearly very problematic. And, and you know, we didn't have listening tools at that point, but exactly to your point, if, if you wait for the onboarding questionnaire to roll out, you're never going to find out. What was happening was there was a real mismatch between what the recruiters were promising and setting up as expectation of what the job was and what they actually walked into on day one, the, the, the expectation of what they were going to be doing relative to where they act, what they showed up to and what it felt like and how they were dealt with was such a massive distance that um, that was causing people to, to pop and you know back in that point it was the well let's go and ask some of them like you, you had to identify the problem and then go and solve it by phone calls and by hands to to find that out and change practice nowadays you know exactly as you say if you, if you understand that you can trigger the question because I think that's what the interesting thing about platforms like Medallia it's it's not it's not you're not having to schedule you're actually triggering off action. Your, you know, X happened. Therefore, the platform knows to send. Or again, you've got your always ons. Like you just had a really bad interaction. Hit this button and ye yell at the camera if you're so inclined. Kind of <laughs> right. Kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, and when we see employees use the camera to provide their feedback, it's actually usually very favorable. Um, 
that they want to speak to senior executives. They want to thank them for the support they've had. They want to thank them for bringing them through um, difficult times or creating a policy that supports them, or they want to recognize their peers or their manager and have senior management see it. So the use of the camera is um, been really exciting in the employee space to see how people share it. Um, one of the things that came up for me as you were just talking is this idea about having um, surveys triggered when different events happen. So you can imagine an employee who finishes training that might trigger a survey, you know, maybe it's their 30 day, we've got that running, you know, we've got the always on, we've got the engagement, you know, you could, you could imagine a few different surveys coming at once. So I do hear some people being concerned about the idea of survey fatigue. Um, and, you know, I, I would say that's a myth that employees are not tired of being asked how they feel and how the experience is for them. They're being tired of, you know, being asked and then no one taking any action. Um, but if we do run multiple surveys, um, Medallia has um, what we call quarantine rules. So we can prioritize which survey an employee would receive and make sure that an employee doesn't receive more than a certain number of surveys over a particular time period. Um, so I know that that can be a concern, but it's easy to remedy. Yeah, I think I think what people get fed up with the surveys is is the the old style engagement. We're like, oh, we're trying to get ninety five percent participation rate. It's like, why are you trying to get ninety five percent participation rate? Like, you, you probably have the answer after thirty percent of contribution. Exactly. Certainly, certainly, when I've seen surveys, like the shape is there after thirty percent, it doesn't change. It um, so I've I've always I didn't, never really understood why a high participation rate was a, a good thing for those things. And so, you know, as a manager, I've been badgered to badger my people to complete the survey and it's like why if they, if they don't want to tell us they don't want to tell us that's uh, that's their choice so interesting to to see that that can be far more responsive to the person's need as opposed to some arbitrary target that's been set it's we, such an excellent point we could probably keep talking for a long time melissa but maybe in terms of wrapping up like people clearly are trying to build out experiences thinking about it for how do they do it in their business you know, you and I both know there's just a ton of hype in the market. There's everybody's an experience, everything. Like if you were to, to try and you know cut through that noise to give one, two, three pieces of advice, like how would you you know voice that to somebody thinking about how do I build experience in this hybrid, you know, who quite knows where we're gonna be working next world that we are we are currently experiencing? Yeah, that's a great question, Ian. Um, and Really what I would say is I think we've been so focused on what I call the company view, like what are the right questions to ask, right? We don't have to figure out what the right questions are to ask, let the employees tell you. you know, so we call that the organic view and just making it easy for them to tell us, right? They're on the front lines, they're experiencing this every day, they can see what's coming often. They'll hear the beginnings of what customers are saying, they see the trends and whatever it might be, just let them tell you and they will be so creative, so innovative. They will move the business forward so quickly. So that, that's the number one thing I would say. And just use the power of text analytics and combining it with data from Visier to really understand who is it? You know, where does it apply? You know, when does this happen? Um, what exactly is it that they're saying? But just give them the freedom to say it. And I, I think that's the beautiful thing about the technology space we're now in, because we can capture that voice and then we can process this day positive, negative, neutral. We can process it to pull out themes and main words. So the technology can actually take all of that unstructured information and give structure to it, which then makes it analyzable. And like again, and I used to have an analyst who would read all the comments and, and code them by hand and process that. But now the technology is doing that for us, which is superb because it, it it turns it around really fast. I think again, that's maybe maybe a piece that people miss is. You know, techno these, these things are known in terms of what we should do. It's just technology has made them instant and, and accessible, which I think is a huge piece. And I, I love the, don't worry about the question, just ask and pay attention. I think that's a really, really nice, simple piece of advice. Yes, yeah, we've been saying, uh, it's not what you ask, it's when you ask. Cool, great. Yeah, um, so, you know, talking with, me now that I've spent a little time in CX wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention something about customer experience. I'm just so passionate about bringing employee and customer together because I think this is really where we're all headed. Um, and one of the best ways I think of bringing um, Medallia and Visier together on the customer side is as customer experience as an outcome that 
HR departments and businesses are focused on and can be focused on. So they're able to bring together all the things that are happening in this year, the events for employees, the environment, and then use it as an outcome, um, the customer experience. So what things in the employee experience, in the environment, in the events that happen to employees impact customer experience. And I think that can be so powerful and a great way to build a business case, to create ROI for work that's being done in HR and in culture teams. No, I think that's I think that's almost the most crucial um, kind of culmination of all the thinking. We, we went sort of looking to engage with experienced vendors, which moved us to, to connecting more deeply with Medallia. Because we recognize that people analytics has to be about the so that a lot of people on like conversations have been about, you know, what's the best algorithm for risk of exit? Great conversation, really important piece of science. But why would you do that if you're not going to help keep people, if you're not going to help change some outcome for the business? So uh, I'm seeing this third wave of people analytics, which is which is starting for some. Uh, others are moving towards it. Others will have to run to catch up where all the aspects of wh whatever data you're capturing, you need to get it together but not just for the sake of having it together, it's so that you can say, when I move this lever, it reduces risk, it improves cost, it potentially leads to future revenue. And I think you know this, the, the focus of people analytics that we will all be chasing over the next two to five years is, is nailing down, like how do we do that repeatedly fast in a way that drives manager action? And I think the experience data with the, the situational event data from Vizier is a huge step in the right direction. You know, it delivers a ton of that straight away, and that there's there's more to chase. I think that, you know, leaving as a final thought is if you think experiences, make sure they're going to pay back to the business, um, not just experience for experience sake. Thank you for sharing. And before we wrap up, I wanted to jump in and ask uh, a couple questions uh, because Red Thread Research uh, has done a, a people tech uh, people analyze technology study. And uh, this is their second year of doing so, and I helped formulate that. And one of the uh, constructs that we employed was this notion, uh, adopting very simple language, of a data creator uh, versus a data aggregator. And so some are really adept at one or the other, some do both. And what I mean by that, I, I put Medallia very much in the data creator uh, area, first and foremost. Again you do way more than that, but you talked about an always on platform and that data that formerly did not exist is now there. And that data now has to be juxtaposed against other data that are gonna provide context and meeting and provide some ideas on how best to move forward, AKA Vizier. So is that how you're looking at it? And if you, as you go to market with this partnership, you know, what's the narrative that you're putting forth? Hey, you know, we, ha we can do this. However, Medallia does this and Hey, we do this. And now Vizier does this. How do you talk about this expanded capability? And granted, this is very fresh. It's very new. Uh, but I just am excited for the community because there have been gaps and you're talking about in the examples that you showed, I'm thinking about snow now, <laughs> California, <laughs> like, all right, there's not much snow to be pushing around, but I get it. Uh, but you know, again, what's that narrative that you're going to be sharing as you go? Uh, uh, Melissa, you want to take that first? Sure, that's okay with you, Ian. Absolutely. Um, right, we're both so excited about it. So much opportunity here. And when you look at the Red Thread publication uh, from last year, you'll see this year Medallia are right next to each other. We're both data creators and data aggregators, uh, different types of data, right? Ours is all about that organic experience, um, emotion, themes, unstructured data, um, right? As we mentioned, bringing in video, voice, um, social, you know, we just ingest all kinds of data. And this year becomes um, like a, another source that actually brings a lot of richness because it can be so complex. We could see our customers interested in something like cohorts, right? Which this year does very elegantly that I've tried to do and is so much work. There's so much data preparation and staging and constant management of that. And those are some of the real benefits of bringing Medallia and this year together because Medallia already has basic HRIS information or basic ATS or, you know, basic learning and development, but putting it together in complex ways that help you understand, for example, a persona or a series of events, that's really uh, the richness. So 
Well, I, I give uh, Melissa an A on that, um, actually A plus uh, on that uh, proposition. <laughs> um, however, Ian's, uh, and again, I'm, I'm obviously joking because it's not a matter of grading at all. But it's, it's very exciting to hear you, you, you talk about that because you're absolutely right. There's data that has formerly been hard to get in the same narrative. So Ian, what are your thoughts? So uh, I, I think the way I simply put it, uh, Alan, we've, we've talked about this a bunch, it's, it's actually to think of it as an ecosystem. Like this notion that it'll just, it'll all magically happen in one place. It, we, it's never happening. Like I know the sophistication, you know, six years, hundreds of people. I know the sophistication of what Vizier has and we have that corroborated. So I know what it takes to build, maintain, serve that level of technology. Medallia is exactly the same. Like it's not, you know, one's big and one's small. We're, we're both deep, rich capabilities. Uh, and we, we, we have cycles that we serve ourselves, but we recognize that, the, that there's, a, there's a one plus one equals three. And so experience data with the employee that goes somewhere. We I mean, again, you know, you can, we can bring in yet more data. And it's a two way because, again, Vizier is not a dead end. We can pass information out to other systems. We can, we can drive events. We can drive detail. So... We're, we're not just, it all comes to Vizier and has to live there. So there's an element of what Melissa and I are exploring, which is like, how do we drive the event that triggers a survey? Hmm. So I, so I, I know that it's, like, it's always really nice to get a grid. Um, I think the real challenge for the analyst population is like, how do we describe an ecosystem? Right. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it's, it's not two dimensional. It's not an X and a Y. It's, it's an X and a Y plus a few you know, other vectors in there. So. Right. I think the, the real way is, it, and again, it's going to be the, the challenge for Stacey and yourselves next year is it's like, how do we actually gauge who's where in the ecosystem uh, and looking looking at just Medallia and Vizier as hub type uh, applications where they, they serve a certain user with a certain piece and then the data combined into one or the other gives this whole next level of insight. And we've, we've been talking to a number of our customers who are like, I just I want one place to show my people all of the stuff, whether it's experience data, you know, pay data, their learning data, the transactional stuff from talent acquisition of how people got there. You know, I don't want these islands of applications that I have to stitch together in a PowerPoint to tell people a story. I want that in one place. And yeah. so that's that's how the ecosystem is having to form. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, thank you for sharing that because what we had stri striven to do, striven, striven to do <laughs> with this study is uh, people analyst professionals, uh, instead of sitting in front of SPSS or SAS or some big spreadsheet and crunching out a report and writing, defending their dissertation, you know, later, it's really uh, in part and more and more becoming a educated shopper. It's like, how do you put that ecosystem together? You know, what are the risks and opportunities? What are the privacy and transparency concerns? What are the opportunities to really get actionable insight to improve the employee experience, to improve the experience of certain diversity groups? I mean, so there's so much opportunity, but to put that together is you know, not easy. You know, so how do they make sense of it? I think we all have an opportunity in the space to, to better define and understand that how that ecosystem is going to come together. And I know you, in talking to you both, it's going to be different for different organizations because they have different existing capabilities. Is that your experience uh, too? And Melissa, what are your thoughts there? It, it's going to be different for different businesses. But I think the other thing that, that comes with the Medallia Vizio partnership is we're sharing schemas on the back end. Mm. Like, we're, so it, it's not as it might have been in the past where each vendor would try and hold their turf and say, well, I'm not going to tell you about what's going on in my app. That, I've had that experience, whereas we've showed each other schemas. We've talked about the data that comes out. We talked about how it's made and what it means so that when we put it together, it's the vendors are working out how to give that better answer to the customer. It's not the customer having to work it out for themselves. That's that's what this a key piece of this um, partnership is about. And I think you're right. It, you know, people need to think about being educated shoppers as opposed to how can I architect this? There was a, an interesting LinkedIn post recently where an individual went through everything that he had done to build his own stack. And he kind of his finishing line was like, never again, basically <laughs> his statement. 
So <laughs> I think you're onto something else. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see your, your comments. I mean, we probably have uh, you know three or four minutes, so no rush. But uh, yeah, I want to land the plane with you too, because again, I'm really excited about the, your joint capability and you two individually. Just knowing your respective organizations, I, I'm just excited for what the future holds. Thank you, Al. Yeah, we really are too. So I'll, I'll just wrap on a comment that I know both Ian and I share. When you talk about how it will be unique for each organization, I think it's really on the business problem they're trying to solve. So when you think about the morass of data, right, and you know, you're talking about how difficult it is to figure out what you need to do, start with the business problem. What What's the biggest problem your business needs to solve? Why are your senior leaders up at night? Get your champion, find out their problem and solve it. And that's where you get funding, that's where you get impact in the organization, and that's where you get your prioritization. Um, and we're both passionate about that. It's not measurement for measurement's sake. It's to make a difference in the business. And just to shed a light on a feather in your already very bountiful cap, um, it's the case where both of you have capability that a CHRO of 30 years, tenure, or they're not unaware. They don't know really what's possible. So I would invite leaders and analysts alike and HR business partners to be educated, maintain their education on what's happening in the vendor community, because that's where a lot of this innovation is coming from. Mm -hmm. And so I just really celebrate, you know, what uh, you two are doing. Ian, any closing comments? Uh, just, just to say thank you for the opportunity, Al. It's always a, a good times to engage and share the passion and, you know, uh, participate with the community because I, I really feel the pandemic year has accelerated the, the the proof that if you're not pushing people analytics farther, you're you're going to be having a hard time managing a, an effective business going forward. Like it, the remote work just meant data was kind of essential. So just always appreciate the opportunity to uh, to come out and have a chance to talk. Well, I appreciate, uh, again, both your organizations for supporting this community and movement of People Data for Good. And personally, I support and uh, appreciate your efforts to advance what we're trying to do here. So, yeah, you two uh, be well, and hopefully we'll be together before too long, yeah? I hope so. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.